Hey everybody, new school comic books. Okay, so let's jump into it. Uh, let's see here. Let's start with this. I got A Force number one uh, by uh, Wilson, uh, Bennett, and Molina. Uh, basically, this is a tie into the whole Secret Wars uh, thing. Uh, Battle World has kind of been split off into several different sections, and one section is called Arcadia which is patrolled by this team called A-Force. Here they are in their Hall of Justice. And it's basically this all-female team led by uh, She-Hulk. And then what in this issue happens is they're out there on patrol and there's a big uh, threat they have to fight. And Ms. America Chavez kind of breaks the rules and is um, ends up getting punished by Dr. Doom who kind of rules Battle World. Uh, and then some other things happen that I won't want to give away. Um, I gotta say, I was a little bit underwhelmed by this comic. I was really looking forward to it when it first came out, but after reading the first chapter, it's just kind of it's kind of mad. Kind of feels like the sort of thing I usually try to avoid with these kind of crossovers and events, where it's just sort of this side story that really doesn't seem to be that consequential. I gotta admit, this is only the first chapter, uh, so maybe it'll pick up uh, in the next couple of issues. But this was really just mm, okay. Uh, Satellite Sam. By Matt Fraction and Howard Chaikin. Uh, the story started to wind down, and the climax things are just getting really out of control. Um, what's his name? What do you call uh, Michael White? Has kind of pretty much figure out what was going on with his dad and everything, and what's going on with these photographs, and it turns out there are these other photographs and films that his dad has besides all the girly pictures, and uh, everything's kind of come to a head with the studio heads and everyone, and, um, and yeah, lots of violence, lots of anger, lots of hatred, and yeah. Um, so there, without giving too much away, it's coming up to a head. I think it's only got one or two more issues, and uh, and it's going to conclude pretty soon. But um, yeah, it's, I, I kind of wanted the story to pick up, and it's starting to pick up in a big way now. Jim and the Hologram, uh, Holograms number three by Kelly Thompson and Sophie Campbell. Uh, basically, all that happens in this issue is there's a little bit of. Uh, Jim and Rio go on a date. The uh, the other misfits get on Stormer's case because it looks like Stormer and Kimber are developing kind of a friendship, maybe a little special sort of relationship, uh, sort of thing you probably wouldn't have seen in the '80s uh, cartoon show. But uh, but it's there, you know. Uh, there's also supposed to be a Jim uh, live action movie coming out pretty soon, so I'll be curious to see how that is greeted by the uh, by the public. So so yeah, but uh, yeah, I've been kind of enjoying this comic book so far. Um, uh, oh, other comics I got this week, I got. Uh, names issue three and four. I am way behind on this comic. I know the last issue like just came out, but I'm playing catch up here. I got fade out number six. Haven't read it yet. Shaft number six. Uh, Stray Bullets, number four, Sunshine and Roses. Oh, and here's some comics I got last week. I didn't do a video before. Um, but yeah, I got Night Nurse, number one. Ha ha ha. I was actually really excited to get this comic. I had always heard of this. Uh, these are reprints from the early 70s. Of this, It was kind of this soap opera comic that Marvel put out. It only lasted like maybe four issues or so. 
But like I said, I've always kind of interested in it. But I either never see it or I see it going for like ridiculous prices and things like that. I um I erroneously thought that they had tried to turn it into a horror comic because I'd seen this cover before. But really it's it's still pretty much the same thing. It's just that this particular issue was kind of this kind of sort of gothic mystery spin the spin the night in a spooky house type of story, whatever. And this also has a reprint of this issue of Daredevil by Alex Maleev and Brian Michael Bendis. Uh, obviously, it's uh, because of the Daredevil TV series where there's a character played by Rosario Dawson who's kind of an amalgamation of the Brian Michael Bendis version of the character plus Claire Temple who used to be in the Luke Cage comics and of course they're using the, the name Night Nurse or whatever so that's obviously why um, Marvel decided to reprint these issues. I'm kind of wondering um, what might happen with the other series that they're going to put on Netflix. Uh, she's already already made an appearance in uh, the Daredevil series. Jessica Jones is supposed to get a series. Uh, so are uh, Iron Fist and Luke Cage. And I'm kind of wondering if they're going to use her the same way they use Agent Coulson in the... Uh, theatrical movies as kind of like the link that appears uh, with all the different hero stories or whatever so it's kind of be kind of interesting when uh, I think Jessica Jones comes next then I think Luke Cage and then I think Iron Fist and then I think they're going to do the Defenders so it'll be interesting if they keep using the Rosario Dawson character as maybe the connection of to all the characters so it'll be interesting to see um, I got this uh Black Cross uh, by um, Warren Ellis and uh, and Colton Worley. Uh, really been enjoying it. It's just it just comes across like this deep, dark, spooky story. It almost comes across as kind of like you know one of these televised mystery uh, serialized thrillers that you might see on TV or whatever. These, uh, the characters here are basically reworkings of old golden age characters, uh, that have slipped into the public domain. But, uh, here we get kind of this really spooky horror type of, uh, reimagining of the characters. So we got that storm number 11. I think this is the last issue. This is definitely the last issue before the secret, uh, Secret uh, Wars. I asked my guy in the store if they were going to start it over again after Secret Wars, and he said he really wasn't too sure. But I don't know. Maybe maybe we could talk about Storm because I think this comic book had a lot going for it, but I thought it also had a lot against it. So I don't know. I'm kind of contemplating maybe we could do maybe doing a video about you know this particular run of Storm, but we'll see. Uh, also got Miss Marvel 15. Still enjoying it. Uh, all new Avengers, a Ultron Forever, Al Ewing and Alan Davis, uh, Captain America and the Mighty Avengers number eight, Astro City number twenty three. Uh, really enjoyed it. It's basically uh, the story of this uh, talking gorilla who comes to the big city and he ends up saving some people, right? And so what happens is everybody kind of wants him to uh, to kind of join a superhero team or whatever. And oops. And his whole thing is he really isn't too much into the superheroics. He just really wants to be a drummer in a rock and roll band. And I also got let's see here Captain Marvel. 15 really good issue basically kind of a human interest type thing where Carol Danvers has to deal with the death of an old friend so and it's really not a lot of it's not like a big fight issue or anything like that it's just kind of a tender touching little you know, heartwarming story. It's probably one of the better uh, issues in this run so far. 
And I also got Bob Fingerman's Minimum Wage number one. This is the next big uh, mini series here in the. Ooh, I probably not, should not show you that. But the continued adventures of Bob post divorce, trying to get uh, work as a freelance artist, while at the same time, ups and downs of the dating world. So, so there's, so there's that. Okay, and that's it. That's all I got for you this week. Thank you very much for listening, and you have a good day.